Today we're going to discuss fractions and properties of addition. So let's take a look here at the top. There are two little bullets that we need to read through. Okay? The Connect section says the associative and commutative properties of addition can help you to group and order add-ins to find sums mentally. You can use mental math to combine fractions that have a sum of one. And we've done combining fractions that have a sum of one, so that shouldn't get difficult. Let's read the first bullet together. The commutative property of addition states that when the order of two add-ins is changed, the sum is the same. For example, 4 plus 5 is equal to 5 plus 4. So all they did was change around the add-ins. 4 was listed first in the first one, and 5 is listed first in the second one. So that's commutative property. We're going to deal with some of those. Let's read the second one. The associative property of addition states that when the grouping of add-ins is changed, the sum is the same. For example, in parentheses they have 5 plus 8, and then outside the parentheses they have plus 4. Over here, it equals the same thing as taking the 5 out of the parentheses and putting the 8 and the 4 in the parentheses. So what are they changing around? The numbers are listed in the exact same order, right? What moved? The parentheses. So what they're doing first changes. Because if you remember, in order of operations, you have to do things that are in the parentheses first, and then what's outside of it second. Okay? So you're going to pay attention to where they're putting their parentheses, and you may have to change where the parentheses are in some of your problems today. Okay? Let's read the first problem they want us to do. The map shows four lighthouses in the Florida Keys and their distances apart in miles. The Dry Tortugas Lighthouse is the farthest west, and the Alligator Reef Lighthouse is the farthest east. You can see that here in the map. Here's the farthest west, farthest east. You know that because there is a map, and so north is always up top, south, you know, east on the right, and west on the left. We want to know what is the distance from the Dry Tortugas Lighthouse to the Alligator Reef Lighthouse traveling between the four lighthouses. Okay, so take a look at what they're using here. As you can see, from the Dry Tortugas Lighthouse to the Key West Lighthouse is how long? 70 and... By tenths from the Key West Lighthouse to the east. Is that some row? I can't read it very well. That's what it says. Okay. So then what is it? 43 and 6 tenths from there to the Alligator Reef Lighthouse is 34 and 5 tenths. So you can see down here that we're going to use those properties to order and group them. They just wrote them in the order from the left to the right of the lighthouses. So 70 and 5 tenths was listed first, 43 and 6 tenths and then 34 and 5 tenths. Now, is that going to be the easiest way to do the addition for these, is just to add them straight across like that? No. Take a look at your fractions. You have 5 tenths on one of them, 6 tenths on another, and 5 tenths on another. What would be the easiest possible way to get these added together? So the easiest way for us to do this, if you have 5 tenths and 6 tenths and 5 tenths, what do I know about my fractions in tenths? Would it be easy to do 5, six, five tenths and 6 tenths? If I did that, what am I going to get? 11 tenths. Do I want something that's more than 1? So what is 1 in tenths? Kenzie? 10 tenths. So look at the amount of fractions over there. What's going to make 10 tenths? Elena? So the 5 tenths from here and the 5 tenths from here, right? So when I rewrite these, I'm going to put them so that my tenths are going to be able to be 1. Does that make sense? So we're going to write 70 and 5 tenths first because it's there and we can use it. We're going to skip over the 43 and 6 tenths, and we're going to write 34 and 5 tenths next. Because we want to put our 5 tenths together so that we can 
add it up to get to 1. That means what do I have left? 43. The 43 and 6 tenths. So basically all we're doing is writing them in a different order. Yes? Now as we go down, they're going to put these first two in parentheses because they want to do them first. So we're just going to keep writing 70 and 5 tenths and bring down 34 and 5 tenths so that we do it first in parentheses. Once we've done that, we will then add the 43 and 6 tenths. So this is a lot of extra work bringing them down. They probably could have just started out by putting them in parentheses and we wouldn't have to have this step right here. Okay? So now we're going to do the 70 and 5 tenths plus the 34 and 5 tenths. You need to remember to always <coughs> add your fraction first. So 5 tenths and 5 tenths gives you what? 10 tenths, which makes a whole. So you've got a whole that you have to remember to add once I add the 70 and the 34. Okay? So what's 70 and 34? 104, but I have the 1 from the fraction, so I have a total of 105. There is no fraction here. Okay? Because my tenths equaled 1. Then I'm going to add what to this 105? The 43 and 6 tenths that I still have left. Okay? Does everybody kind of see what's going on there? So what is 105 and 43? 148. And I still have how many tenths? 6 tenths. So the distance from the Dry Torticus Lighthouse to the Alligator Reef Lighthouse traveling between the four lighthouses is how many miles? Thank you, 148 and 6 tenths. So you need to be able to look at something like this and know that I'm going to make it easy by changing these two around or putting them together so I can do those first. Why get a fraction greater than one when you don't have to? Does that make sense? Okay, flip the page. Here's another one. Try. We're going to use the properties in mental math to solve it. We're going to show each step and then name the property we use. So I want you to be thinking about what property did you use. I will tell you that over here we used both. We used commutative to switch it around, right? And then we used associative to move the parentheses or to put the parentheses where we wanted. Okay? And it gave you a step-by-step Thing over here, we kind of did it on our own. Use community property to order the add-ins so that the fractions of the sum of one are together. So that's what we did here. Then you're using associative to group them, and then add the group numbers and write the sum. So the same things we took. So over here, they've got one and one third plus in parentheses two plus three and two thirds. Okay. Now I want you to look that over. Is that the grouping you want to have? I'm saying no. Why? Why do I not like the way they grouped it, Logan? Because two thirds and one third equals one. Okay, so he's saying that your fractions of one third and two thirds will give you one, so we should probably put those together. Does that make sense? Okay, so we're going to put one and one third in parentheses and add the three and the two thirds. What's going to be left out here? The two. Does that make sense? All right. So let's do this first part. What's one and one third plus three and two thirds? I'm going to add my fractions first, which gives me three thirds, which makes a whole, and so that I have one whole plus one whole plus three. Five. Five, because there is four plus the one I added with my fraction. So I'm going to put the five below. And then I'm going to add what? The two, which gives me? Seven. Seven. And what property did we just use? And then? Commutative or associative? Associative, because we didn't move our add-ins around, we moved our parentheses around. So we use associative. I will 
something. You write the word property, but you need to write associative. If you don't know how to spell it, where are you going to go look? On the other side, it has them listed for you. They're also up here on the board. So associative property moves the parentheses around, or the groupings as they call them. Your community will move your add-ins around. All right. Look at the share and show. You're going to complete it and name the property that's being used. You need to take a good look at what's happening here. This is the problem that you're looking at. Okay. This is what they did over here also to start you out. So what needs to go here? What's missing from this? They started with three and four tenths plus five and two tenths in parentheses. They added six tenths. Then they decided to do 5 and 2 tenths plus 3 and 4 tenths. So what's missing over here? 6 tenths. Now, that was what property? It's commutative. And in my mind, fourth graders, that is an unnecessary change, right? You can do associative property right away and alleviate having to do the community property. Why switch them around? When I know I'm going to put two things together that are going to get me to the tense, I can alleviate this step right here. Okay? And that's kind of what we did up here. We could have changed these add-ins around up here on this one, but we didn't because it's not really worth it. You're still going to get the same answer as long as you know what to put together. Does that make sense? Because now I have to go from community property to what? Associative. So take a look. They started with five and two tenths. They're not putting that in parentheses now. They're going to put three and four tenths plus what in parentheses? The six tenths. Because they know that six tenths and four tenths makes what? Ten tenths, which is a whole. So this is the associative property. So I will not... Be upset if you leave out that community property step. If you know how to do the associative property, move your parentheses around and get what you need, I am good with it. Because the community property is just an extra step. So, they're leaving the 5 and 2 tenths here, so let's do what's in parentheses first. What do I get when I add 3 and 4 tenths plus 6 tenths? 6 tenths and 4 tenths gives you what? 10 tenths, which is what? A whole plus the, so I have four. No fraction, just four whole. Then I'm going to add that with the five and two tenths, and I get what? Nine and two tenths. Nine and two tenths. 